In this position it looks natural to put a rook on c8, and maybe to repel the white knight from its advanced position on b5 with, n a7 at some point, white then replies n c3 and black probably returns his knight to c6, inviting a draw. But the question is what this does to actually help black with his real problem, which is what to do with his bishops and rooks. In the game Topolovic decided on a more active plan, which proved successful in practice. Whether it is stronger is hard to say, but it certainly makes a lot of sense. f7 f6 This move has two purposes. First of all it aims to open the f-file, or at least to have this possibility available. But it is the second option which is really attractive, the inactive bishop on d7, which has little prospect of coming alive by being the key player behind a, b5 break, is offered a route to freedom. The downside to this move is the weakening of the e6 square. White should definitely have tried to use this more forcefully than he did in the game. The outcome would then have been significantly in doubt. Queen d1 d2 It is always worth considering whether white should take on f6. Black can then consider taking back with the rook, most natural, or with the g-pawn, somewhat risky in my opinion. In general, White plays this phase of the game as if he has no idea what the function of his pieces should be. Bishop d7 e8 Rook a1 c1 f6 captures e5. Seems more accurate. After. f4 captures e5. Bishop e8 g6. Black has fully equalized. Bishop e8 g6. Black gives the impression of thinking that white will not do anything active, and he is right. I have the feeling that sometimes there are signs in our body language that are picked up subconsciously by our opponents and which help determine the direction of the game. If a player feels indecisive and uncertain, he will pass this impression on to his opponent, who will then naturally be more confident. This can in turn lead to increased uncertainty for the first player. If you want to turn this into something more than pop psychology, the advice would be to be confident at the board and hope that this gives you a small extra edge. Obviously, if your moves are bad, this may not do you much good. Knight f3 e1. This passive move is hopefully better explained by my dodgy psychology than by Kozakov's understanding of chess. The intention is to attack the e6 pawn, but very little is achieved by this, and in turn the knight is poorly placed on e1. Knight f3 e1. This passive move is hopefully better explained by my dodgy psychology than by Kozakov's understanding of chess. The intention is to attack the e6 pawn, but very little is achieved by this, and in turn the knight is poorly placed on e1. e5 captures f6. This was the correct move. Black should play. G7 captures F6. Otherwise he could quickly find himself in a worse situation. Rook f8 captures f6. Knight f3 e5. Black has to defend against nd7, either with the passive, b8 or with.
Knight c6 captures e5. d4 captures e5. Freeing the d4 square for the knight and the queen. Rook f6 f8. Bishop e2 g4. Rook a8 e8. Queen d2 d4. Queen b6 captures d4. Knight b5 captures d4. Knight b4 d3. Bishop a3 takes on e7. Rook e8 captures e7. Knight d4 captures e6. White is close to winning in these complications. Knight f3 e1. This passive move is hopefully better explained by my dodgy psychology than by Kozakov's understanding of chess. The intention is to attack the e6 pawn, but very little is achieved by this, and in turn the knight is poorly placed on e1. f6 captures e5. Was stronger. It will be a very long time before white can compete for the f file, so opening it is in black's interest. f4 captures e5. Rook f8 captures f1. Bishop e2 captures f1. Bishop g6 e4. White is rather passive. After. Bishop f1 e2. Rook a8 f8. It is very hard to arrange to play bg4 while the knight is poorly placed on e1, weakening the first rank, allowing mate, for example. Bishop g6 e4. It was the last chance for e5 captures f6, when white would still not be worse. Bishop e2 g4. f6 captures e5. Was attractive, after all, 
the pin down the F file means that the pawn is hanging. White would probably have to play something along the lines of Bishop G4 captures E6 King G8 H8 D4 captures E5 Knight C6 takes on E5 Bishop G4 takes on E6 Bishop G4 captures E6 F6 F5 Having established the bishop on E4, it is quite natural to fix the pawns on light squares behind it. The only possible objection is that there was another interesting possibility here, which may be even stronger. Bishop G4 E2 At this point black clearly looked for a way to bring the rooks into the game. The most natural way is to play on the side of the board where he is stronger, which is the king side. However, this entails weakening the king and should not really work against the best defense. But with an opponent who is simply waiting for you to advance, we often see that the strongest continuation is to play as aggressively as possible. Knight c6 a7 Knight b5 c3 Rook a8 c8 Was more standard, and would not have involved the risks black took in the game Rook f8 f7 Rook c1 c3. The rook is well placed here, looking towards both sides of the board. King g8 h8. Knight e1 d3 was possibly even stronger. The knight is going to c5, exploiting that the d4 pawn is immune because of qe3 tricks. The board catches fire after g7 g5. Knight d3 c5. g5 captures f4. Knight c5 takes on e6. Knight c6 captures e5. When I assess the complications as leading to a strange form of balance. h2 h3. This is a horrible move in many ways. 
First of all it does very little for the white position, you can only surmise that white may have thought he would have to play kh1h2 soon. One better option was to carry out a little prophylaxis against black's plan with 8. nf3 and 9. rfc1, when black is prevented from playing, g5 and the white pieces are back in the game. The tactical point behind these moves is that 9, rg8, is punished with 10. and g5. When black is in deep trouble. But if black does not commit suicide then the position is just equal. Rook a8 g8. White is no longer able to stop, g5 and his position must be worse. But this does not justify his reaction, where he eliminates the e4 bishop with devastating structural consequences. Lost for moves are the words that spring to mind. Bishop e2 f3. g7 g5. Black won the game without much difficulty. White could maybe have offered more resistance, but his position is quite bad already. Bishop f3 captures e4. d5 takes on e4. Knight e1 c2. g5 takes on f4. Bishop a3 captures b4. Knight c6 captures b4. Rook c3 c4. Knight b4 d5. King h1 h2. Rook f7 g7. Rook f1 g1. f4 f3. g2 g3. f5 f4. g3 g4. h7 h5.